Hi everyone, welcome tonight. Thank you for coming out. My name is Kristen Lowe and I am a divorce attorney and tonight we are going to be going over all of the divorce forms that you need to get started in the divorce process and we are going to be helping you and the reason why we're doing this for you for free is because we love what we do. I really enjoy being a family law attorney. I enjoy helping people through a really difficult time in their lives and when I go to the courthouse and I see people struggling and trying to get through the divorce process on their own, it's really hard and I can't help everybody with their divorce, but I'm hoping that by giving seminars like this that I can help more people than I do right now. So I hope you're comfortable. The reason why we're doing it here instead of at the courthouse, first of all, budget cuts, there's no way they're open tonight. And second of all, we have a little bit more updated equipment and technology than they do, so you don't have to deal with the 60s projectors. All right, so we have our person set up. I have pulled an innocent victim out of this audience and they're gonna be helping me type the forms just to show you that anyone can do it and it is accessible and it is doable. So we're just going to do this real time and mistakes and all, we're gonna keep going. So if you have any questions, and I know it's hard and this might be a little bit embarrassing to be asking your personal question to everyone here, so you can talk to me afterwards. If not, give me a call afterwards. If you need to email me, let's do that and we'll make sure everybody has my contact information. And then with that being said, let's get started. All right, so we are back on our home screen. We're gonna go back to commonly used forms and we are gonna go back a little bit to the FL 105. So if we could get our volunteer to click on that, please. Again, we're gonna go to the divorce tab and go down to FL 105. So you see that's a very, very long form, but there's a parentheses and it's got a parentheses and so I always call it that, the UCCJEA. So let's get on that form. This form only applies to you if you have minor children. And minor children meaning under the age of 18 and they're children of your relationship, meaning of the petitioner and the respondent. Stepchildren, children prior to your marriage, children prior to your relationship, none of those count. Okay. So this is just like our petition with the caption with regards to filling out the top. So we're gonna start with your name. And in our example, we've been using Jamie Smith and Jamie's mailing address. And in case it's not obvious, you wanna make sure you have the same mailing address on every single one of your forms. Doesn't do the court any good if you put three different addresses there. Same thing with your phone number, make sure you're consistent with the phone number. So the UCCJEA stands for Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction and Enforcement Act. It's a very long title. Basically, we want to prevent kidnapping, and the whole United States has very similar declarations. We have to do some sort of UCCJEA declaration. We need to know where the kids have lived for the last five years. Same thing with that caption. We're in Contra Costa County, so we've got 751 Pine Street is the address. PO Box 911 is the next line and the city and the zip code is Martinez, California and 94553. What was that? 94553. Okay, and the petitioner, we have Jamie Smith and the respondent, again, we've got Dale Smith. This form applies to more than just divorces, so you're gonna see some parts that you don't need in there, but we don't need any of that because we are on divorce, so let's scroll down. Again, we don't have a case number why we haven't filed for divorce yet. When you file for divorce, that's one of the things you get. All right, so number one, I'm a party to the proceeding. Number two, unless there's domestic violence, and if there's domestic violence, uh, you want to consult with an attorney, so talk with me afterwards. So we're not gonna check that. Number three, in our example, we have two kids. We have Susan and Robert, so we're gonna put under three, we're gonna specify the number. We're gonna put two minor children. It doesn't matter if you do the number or you write it out. And we're gonna go to child's name. So our oldest child in our example is Susan. So we've got Susan Smith. And we wanna go back five years. So place of birth. Let's just say Susan was born in San Francisco. And California. Date of birth, does anybody remember the date that we put down for Susan? Um, so we wanna put a birth date down and it should match whatever the petition was. If somebody can look that up, thank you. And she is a female. 
and then we're going to put the period of residence. And again, we're going to go back five years. The most recent address is there. And if you cannot remember the specific month and day, at least get the year, because we want to go back five years. So let's just say from 2010 to the present, Susan's been living at Jamie's address, and that's the 123 Main Street. And then the person lived with, and we'll say that Susan's lived with Jamie Smith and Dale Smith. And the relationship would be parents. And that's the next box over there. There we go. Just go down to the purple. There we go. And let's plural that. Perfect. And then we want to go back and let's just for simplicity's sake say from birth, so 11, 11, 99 to 2010. And then we only have to do the city and the state, so you don't have to go back and remember every address you've lived at for the past five years. So let's just say they lived in San Francisco from birth until 2010. So San Francisco, California. And then the same thing, the person lived with, I, we assume Jamie and Dale Smith, and they are the parents. And if you lived at more addresses, you would want to keep filling that out. And if you need an attachment page, there are attachment pages that you could put in there. But let's just keep scrolling down. Remember, these are just minor children of the relationship. We don't count stepkids. We don't count your children from a prior relationship. We don't count pets, no matter how much you think that they are your children. All right, and then we have Robert here. So we're going to put Robert Smith up under B. Perfect. And let's just say Robert was also born in San Francisco, a place of birth. And his date of birth, again, I have no recollection of what example we used for his date of birth. Oh, my volunteer knows. Okay, and it's a boy, male. And so if Robert has always lived with Susan, like most traditional households, we would just have to check that box. Residence information is the same as given above for child A. So we don't have to retype it all, which is great. And I know the form seems a little funny and seems all blank, but that's actually a good thing. So let's keep going down. So as long as Robert's always lived where Susan's lived, we can just omit the rest of the information and go on to page two. If you had more than two children, you would attach a page. That was what you would see under C and D. And if they have more residences, you would attach a page. All right, so again, top of page two, we always have the caption. Short title, marriage of, or us attorneys like to do IRMO, which is in re marriage of, I-R-M-O, it doesn't matter. So marriage of Smith. And again, we don't have a case number yet. You will get a case number at some point in time. All right, so for most people, the rest of this form is very easy, so I'm not going to go into the details. I'm going to assume that your kids have always lived with you, and nobody is trying to take them away from you, and there are no criminal uh, cases or juvenile cases, and we don't have CPS involved. So for most people, four, you're going to check them that box no, meaning nobody else is trying, there are no other cases involving the kids. And then we're going to scroll down to the next question, and we're also going to check the box no, because we're going to assume that nobody else is trying to take custody of your kids away from you. So what I tell my clients is, you want this, bo you want this page to look blank. It's a good thing for it to look blank. All right, let's keep going down. Okay, so we want to leave it all blank. And then number six, you want to check no, because nobody wants to have custody over your kids. Perfect. All right, and that'll scroll us down all the way to the bottom. And you want to print your name here. And you're going to date it, and you will sign it once you print it out. Now, this is where you're going to need a little bit of knowledge over your particular courthouse. Contra Costa County, for example, requires this document to be attached to your petition. So we did your petition earlier. That's the FL100. Other counties, for example, Solano County, want them to be two separate documents. So every county is just a little bit different. Alameda County doesn't care. You can put it all together, you can leave it separate, they don't care. But 
that's definitely a county specific thing so you'll want to make sure you know how to bring your papers to the courthouse okay so if you're the petitioner we've now done the petition we've done the summons and this uccjea if you have minor children of your relationship those are the three documents you need to bring down to the courthouse and start the divorce process. So we're going to next talk, not really so much about the forms, but we're going to talk about what do you do now that you have your forms completed out. Hi, I'm Kristen Lowe. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope that I was able to help you through this really difficult time in your life. I'd like to invite you to hit like or comment or subscribe to our video series. If you have any specific questions regarding the form or regarding the divorce process itself, please email me directly at kristen at kristenlowlaw.com. Thanks again.